What's going on everybody? My name is Brian and for those new to the channel, I'm a doctor who's also an avid sports fan and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at Marcus Mariota and his recent diagnosis of a stinger and talking about what exactly stingers are and how they occur in athletes. So this past week in the NFL, Mariota was diagnosed with a stinger and there's news this week that he could potentially miss this upcoming game that could determine whether or not the Titans make the playoffs. So if we look back, Mariota's problems with nerve type injuries actually began all the way back in week one of the NFL season when he is diagnosed with what doctors were considering some sort of ulnar nerve problem. Let's take a look at that injury back in week one against the Dolphins to see exactly what was going on. Looking closely at the video, you can see that Mariota comes down and lands on his right shoulder, which is his throwing shoulder. When he comes up, you can see him kind of looking funny at his hand and kind of shaking it out. And as doctors were feeling around, they were trying to feel on what we would call the ulnar nerve because that could be part of why he was having symptoms in his hand. Now fast forward along later on in the season, later in November when the Titans were playing the Colts, and again, we can see Mariota here get tackled in this big pile and come down and have recurrence of what they were saying was a stinger in his right arm. And then of course, most recently this past Sunday in the game, he also was tackled, went down and again, landed on that right shoulder and was taken out of the game and afterwards diagnosed again with another stinger. Let's first talk in general just what a stinger is and then we'll go into the anatomy a little bit and why they can happen. What we consider a stinger, or sometimes you'll hear it referred to as a burner, is basically any sort of transient or temporary symptoms of nerve damage typically occurring in the arm or the hand. These are usually injuries to what we call the brachial plexus located up in the neck where all those nerves exit and go down to the arm. And basically there's some sort of trauma or injury that sort of shocks or stuns these nerves, causing the player or the athlete to have symptoms, things like numbness, weakness, tingling, typically down in the arm and in the hand, just like Mariota had. The majority of stingers that players suffer will last for just a few seconds or a few minutes. Sometimes you'll see a player kind of shaking their arm or hand out on the field. It goes away, they're allowed to go right back in the game, no permanent or long-term damage, but around five to 10% of these can actually last on the order of hours to days to weeks. So let's take a look at some of the anatomy behind what this brachial plexus thing is to get a better sense of what types of injuries and hits can cause these stingers. Now I don't have a good model for this video and so instead I'm gonna rely on my own anatomy here to help show you guys what's going on. All right, so what I've basically done here is essentially just draw the brachial plexus on myself, all right? So this is dedication. So let's walk through the anatomy here. So first of all, we've got the collarbone or the clavicle coming in front and inserting on the sternum or the breastbone. And then all of these orange structures you can see back behind it, that's part of what we call the brachial plexus. And behind that, there's some muscles that kind of run through there as well and some blood vessels. But just think of all these nerves running down through here, through the neck, into the shoulder and down into the arm. So you can imagine if there's some sort of damage or injury up here that it's gonna go down and cause weakness in the hand because all these nerves are controlling those functions in the hand. There's three different types of mechanisms that we think about for a stinger, and we can actually look at the footage on this to get a sense of what might have happened with Mariota. The first and most common one in athletes is compression. So imagine an NFL player who's got their big shoulder pads that sit and kind of run right down there on top of these nerves. If they come and they land on that side, those shoulder pads are gonna press and you can see how those nerves in the skin just kind of get pressed and shrunk up. So if you imagine a helmet coming down, colliding with a pad, those are gonna get smashed. And if we look back at the footage, that looks like what was happening in at least this most recent injury that Mariota suffered. The second mechanism that can be seen with these is what we would call traction. So traction basically means that they're stretched, all right? So if we can illustrate that a little bit, imagine someone who lands or gets hit and their neck gets stretched or gets pulled away from those nerves. So if those nerves are hanging out like this and then we stretch and pull them, you can kind of see how they pull a little bit. And that pulling mechanism can damage those nerves for that short period of time. The other thing that can happen is hyperextension. So extension is pulling the head backwards. So if you pull the head backwards and you've got any sort of structural damage already in that spine, you can pinch those nerves in that space. So same thing, if I kind of extend backwards, you can see how all that's getting mashed up and moved around. The other cool little tip that I'll tell you too, there's a place anatomically that we call Herb's Point. And Herb's Point is typically the most common site where stingers happen. 
when they're from that compression type. And that point is located here towards the top of the brachial plexus. And the reason it's so susceptible is because it's the point where those nerves are closest to the skin. So what does all this mean for Mariot going forward? Well, obviously from the fact that he's still having persistent symptoms, we know that it's probably a more severe stinger. Now, he was also having some symptoms and pain more at the elbow. And so if we follow these nerves all the way down, eventually one of them runs down through the elbow in this area. And that can be a totally different thing. You can get hit there, you can have that nerve snapping around that can cause weakness, but a true stinger is coming from up in the brachial plexus. And these can recur in around 50% of athletes that have one. And in terms of recovery, a lot of it is just waiting for those nerves to calm down. Sometimes if it takes a prolonged period of time, the doctors will do more studies to actually assess the nerves themselves to see if there's any more long-term damage but a lot of it is just kind of waiting for things to quiet down to the point where they're not having symptoms and they're able to hold on to a football and play. So that is it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful to explain what stingers are and kind of where they happen and why they happen. I hope you liked my little anatomy drawing. I'm really going to hope that these things wash off later. Um, let me know, as always, comments below what you guys think, any other injuries you want to see. And until next time, everybody take care and thanks for watching these videos.